Okay, next page on our lesson 6.2, binomial distributions. Here we have example 3. And in example 3, we have a pair of dice. A pair of dice means we're going to get a sum, right? Two dice means a sum. And they're rolled eight times. Find the probability of rolling double sixes. Okay, now I know what I'm looking for. What's the probability of rolling double sixes once? Okay. So, to set this up, I'm going to think very carefully about what my P, Q, and N are equal to. What's the probability of success? Well, what is it that we're looking for? What is a success to us? We need to roll a double six. Well, we know that the probability of rolling a double six is 1 in 36 from our sum chart. Well, if there's a 1 in 36 chance of doing that thing, there must be a 35 and 36 chance of not doing that thing. Q represents the probability of failure here. And N represents how many times we actually perform the experiment. Here, we're rolling them eight times. There's one more variable we should add here, which is our random variable, X. What are we looking for here? Are we, what is the random variable going to be? Well, the random variable here represents how many of these double sixes we need, and that's once, so x equals 1. Okay. If I'm going to calculate this, I could set up a table, for sure, and think about all the different possibilities where we get how many double sixes. x represents the number of double sixes. I could have zero double sixes, or one, or two, or three, dot, dot, dot. That's a lot of things to calculate. What do we need for this one? Only one row, this one row here, where x is equal to 1. So let's calculate that right now, using our binomial distribution. Out of 8 rolls, or 8 trials, we must have got success this many times, one time. So 8 choose 1 comes from Pascal's triangle, 8th row, first position. Uh, success. What's the probability of success here? 1 in 36. How many times did that happen? Once. Failure. 35 in 36. How many times did failure happen if we got one success? 7. These have to add up. These exponents have to add up to 8. 8 trials total. And so if we calculate that right now, we get 35 in 36 raised to the 7, divided by 36, times 8. I get 0 0.1825. 1825, or 18.25% chance of that happening. So, we've calculated it. It is an 18.25% chance of that happening. Okay, let's go on to B. In part B it says, not once, but at least once. How does that change the question? At least once means it could have happened once, or twice, or three times, or four, five, six, seven, or eight times. So at least once means we're taking all of these, all the way down to eight, and calculating each and every separate case, and then adding them up. Well, that would be a lot of cases to add up. Isn't there an easier way to figure this out? If this is the group that we want, I'm sure a lot of you are yelling at me, indirect method, which is great. I'm glad you're going to use that. What's the one case that we don't want then? Zero. And what would all of these probabilities add up to at the end? If we were to calculate every single case from zero to eight, the sum should be, you guessed it, one. It has to add up to 100% because this is every single case. So what we're going to do here, our plan at least, is for at least once, we are going to take the probability that our random variable x is greater than or equal to 1. And we're going to calculate that by saying, let's take 100% or 1 and subtract the probability or probabilities that we don't want. In this case, we don't want the probability that x is equal to 0, this first case here. All right, let's set that up. 1, 
minus. What is the probability that x equals 0 following our binomial distribution here? That is 8 choose 0 times 1 in 36 raised to the 0 times 35 and 36 raised to the 8. Well, that's pretty easy because 8 choose 0 is 1. 1 over 36 raised to the 0 is 1. And what we're left with is just this. 1 minus... Sorry, you can't see that. 1 minus... Our answer of 79.82% is 20.18%. So 20.18% chance that you're going to get at least one double six. Now, does that make sense logically? Sure it does. It's not very rare, sorry, it's a very rare thing to do to roll a double six. It's not very common. So in order to get double six once or twice or three times, right, etc., that's going to be your, that's going to be a pretty low amount. Um... And so at least once, we're going to use the indirect method. That's the must, much easier way uh, to figure that one out. Okay, last thing on this page. In general, if P is success and Q is the probability of failure and N is the number of trials, then for a binomial distribution, the probability that our random variable X is equal to little x. Little x just represents a number, like 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 just like it did up here, x equals 0. So in general, x equals x is equal to the number of trials, this is coming from Pascal's triangle, the number of trials choose x times the probability of success, that's little p, raised to the x, times the probability of failure, that's little q, raised to the n minus x. If we got one success, then probability of failure would be raised to the 1, q would be raised to the n minus 1, because you must have had that many failures to make up your total. And that is it.